What's the hardest product review? An honest one. If you focus on the positives only, you can generate a big following and get to know the manufacturer and meet all the people who designed the product. If you make an objective review, in some cases, those same people will resent you and that following you have could turn on you. If you're watching this to learn about the Fisker Ocean, you've come to the right place, and your quest for knowledge and answers is why I make videos. Here's the route to Boston from where I live. I spent Labor Day weekend in the car so you guys could get a good idea of what it's like to test drive a Fisker Ocean. But I digress. Let's get to your comments. And if you're new to the channel, these comments are from the test drive video of the Fisker Ocean that I recently released. So if you haven't watched that, it's kind of must see for this to make sense. It's in the right corner and in the description. There are several viewers of the channel who also took recent test drives. I did a test drive in New Jersey. I plan routes from my couch with ETA listed so I know when to leave. I like Google Maps and my wife prefers Waze. No CarPlay, not happy. I found the steering wheel adjustments too limited, and that makes it hard to see the forward display. I did the New Jersey test drive. Fisker will become our daily. I thought the ride was enjoyable and comfortable. Looks great, it's unique, and it has what I need it to have. I test drove it, no lag issues. The material quality was fine. The drive quality was fine. Overall, the SUV was okay. Nothing special, but not bad. Some of your analysis is fair. I test drove in Fort Lauderdale. Quality felt the same as Audi, if not better. Car felt very premium, unlike Tesla's. Fisker is still the EV to get. I have an order for the sport trim. Did you find the brake pedal mushy? I'm gonna be a bad judge here. I arrived in a Tesla. You don't have to use the brake in it, except to put it in gear. Could have been experiencing brake fade. I figure some of the test drives could have been particularly harsh on the vehicle. Thanks for your feedback. Test drive from Los Angeles. Width of the seats seemed fine. I don't currently own an EV and it's difficult to gauge real-world performance from a test drive. I'm disappointed about the lack of car play. Steering wheel seemed fine. In the conclusion, you mentioned the Ocean being great in 2024. Yes, the software will be much improved by 2024, more on that later, in fact, and congrats on your order. I appreciate the congrats. I'd hate to buy this car and have it be a horrible mistake. There are many folks who are on the fence about the Fisker Ocean and some of you guys chimed in. I canceled my Ocean 1 back in March. I put in an order for an EX30. Any way I can get out of my $1,000 deposit. I would message Fisker. I don't know if there's any way to get your money back. I strongly recommend everyone test drive an Ocean before confirming your payment or accepting delivery. I feel deceived and lied to. 32 amp charging is what's used on the outgoing Nissan Leaf. After test driving, I want my $5,000 back. I have decided not to take my extreme with the $1,000 deposit I already have. I don't want to be sitting in a brand new car for a year that is not functioning properly, software and charging wise. Software is not ready for production. We'll look back in future. I am a Fisker Ocean 1 cancel. I ended up canceling and going with the 2023 Genesis GV60. Your comment about the 2024 Ocean getting much better is not more than wishful thinking. I'm going with the Model S all-wheel drive instead. Cheap materials, especially the screen, is a no-go for me. I'm not buying the car as a statement or for wow factor. I'm buying it mostly for the interior. There was mention of a subscription for some Ocean features. If Fisker had started making deliveries last December with a real start of production of November 2022, I feel confident this vehicle would be in a more competitive position at this point. Rad givers have provided an answer that the Fisker Intelligent Pilot and Ultimate packages will be subscription only when they return and the pricing is set to be announced later this fall. Adaptive crews and lane centering will be behind a paywall. Is there any word on how much the subscription would cost? There's no official release on whether or not the subscription will be available, nor how much it will cost right now. I want the Intelligent Pilot package for the Ultra, not a subscription. I'm still on the fence about whether or not I will take delivery. I guess I'll wait until the official announcement of the subscription before I decide whether or not to cancel. Some people, in general, were satisfied with the result of my test drive and its conclusions. Truly valuable video. Almost qualifies as a public service. Nice to have met you in person. I always like meeting members of the community. Thank you so much for saying hello. 
had to subscribe to you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. In fact, if you're watching and haven't subscribed, I would sincerely appreciate it. Thanks again. Nice to be able to get the answer of what we want to know and what Fisker has a tight lid on. Great review. Here's hoping the vehicle gets finished soon. Excellent review. Great review, very honest. You should review and test other EVs. I would love to test drive more EVs. If you guys are interested in watching content like that, make sure you comment below and smash the like button. I'm gonna hold on to my reservation for now and wait for the car to get polished to a mirror finish. Oddly, I feel this may benefit Fisker. I am optimistic about Fisker as a company myself. They are taking feedback and this is the earliest iteration of software and can only go up from here. Thanks for your comment. You guys had a lot of general questions about the ocean that I definitely want to address as well. Did a Fisker representative ride with you? And what did you think of the black and white interior? I don't really have any specific comments about the interior. I think you should go with the one you want. I'm a detailer myself, so the darker the better for me, just because I know that's the easiest way to make it look great. But my first car had white seats and I absolutely love them. So I think to each their own on the seats. Thanks so much for your comment. I give zero Fs about Infomedia as long as I I can hook up my phone. My goal with the test drive video was to communicate as much as possible in as short of a period of time. Thanks for your comment. Can I lease one? Technically, yes, but they haven't said anything about the lease for a very long time, and pretty much everybody who has a reservation right now is only being prompted to purchase. Hope that helps. I wish the best of luck to Fisker. It's really tough with the current market. Totally agree. No CarPlay, no Fisker. I think Fisker will come to learn that not adding CarPlay may have been an oversight as time passes. 70,000 is not a small token of faith. I agree with this. You really are betting big going with an ocean. Amazon will deliver on software. I'm optimistic about that as well. Why didn't you include any driving footage? Uh, number one for safety, but mostly because I was told by the Fisker representatives at the test drive that I spoke to that they would prefer not appearing on camera. And because they were so helpful, I definitely wanted to honor that request. Hope that helps. Does 32 amp rule out vehicle to home? After a ton of reading to validate my findings, most resources state that the current that comes from the car back into your home is converted from DC power to AC power using the electric vehicle supply equipment or EVSE. That means just like DC fast charging to your car, it would be DC discharge from your car. And the hardware mounted to your home externally from the car would control how the power is delivered to it. So if Fisker went super cheap on the onboard AC charger, which takes AC power from your wall and puts DC power in your battery, the 32 amp limitation refers only to that AC input, not DC output. If anyone has any further information on this, please let me know in the comments. A lot of people will buy based on value for money. I am certain of this. And the hardest thing about the ocean is it was conceived before the pandemic. And I'm sure a lot has changed since then, including a recession. Thanks for your feedback. In 2020, I bought the first EV from Volkswagen Audi Group. And guess what? The software was not there. What they found after less than a year was that to fix it, they have to upgrade the hardware. So early adopters never got the desired fix. This is not a computer game where you can fix an issue overnight. Thanks for your insights. Do you have any hope that the actual feel and quality of the interior may be improved on the finished sales model cars? I'd say hardware wise, no. These are exactly what production Ocean Ones are gonna look and feel like. The software definitely could be a demo version, however. Thanks for your comment. The interior is made from plastic bottles. What do people expect? This is true. I'm okay with the interior. I just wanted to point out the reality of it. And especially because one commenter asked, does it feel like a $70,000 car? And interior wise, there are plenty of $70,000 cars out there that are gonna have better touch and feel. Doug DeMiro just did the Lexus RZ, for example, and that interior looks much higher quality for about the same price, even though the Ocean does have it beat in basically every other category, range, charging speed, battery size, etc. I have a reservation for the Pair and an Alaska, I bet the other two vehicles could suffer from first edition issues as well, we'll have to see. I'm looking for something to replace my Kia EV6. The EV6 is a wonderful car. I've actually driven one. They're kind of top of the list as far as my favorite CCS EV that's not a Fisker Ocean. Good luck with your search. Let me know how it goes. The temperature and volume controls in the rear seat are behind the middle back seat. What do we do if there's three people in the back? These controls can be accessed through the touch screen as well. Your comment on Model Ys are so true. Just got back from New York City and I saw a lot. 
Thanks for your comment. You said Canadians called the 22s ridiculous and insane. Does that mean they're too oversized, too expensive, quick to wear? I just think that Canadians need as many options as possible when it comes to winter tires. And those 22s are actually brilliantly engineered by Bridgestone, but that specific size is difficult to find in kind of any other configuration. And of course, cost is a factor as well. Thanks for your comment. Speaking of tires, there was a recent email that came out about the 20 inch Aero Stealth. Obviously, I wasn't able to test drive it, but they will be seven spoke. There's a removable cover. They're made from sustainable materials and their aerodynamic design will increase efficiency. That's what we know about the 20 inch wheel, at least right now. I love the look, but I can't take delivery until everything is complete. I totally understand. Let me know how it works out. I really wish they'd add CarPlay. I, I know it for sure. During my test drive at Manhattan headquarters, multiple reps confirmed Apple CarPlay will be announced in the future. You know me, I don't like to take information until it actually is announced. Thanks for your comments. I have Sport on order, may cancel and transfer to the pair. Or I may go with Model 3 Highland. I'm right there with you. The Highland looks really nice. The Sport will also be worth the 40K. I don't think anyone will be disappointed with an Ocean Sport. I'm not sold on the pair yet myself, but it will be affordable, at least in its base trim. Remember, Fisker advertised the Ocean as starting at the price of the Sport, but the launch models were almost twice the cost. Thanks for your comment. The car won't be ready to fully review until late 2024. So Doug DeMiro, who is as credible as anyone in the car review world, has done a review of the Fisker Ocean, mostly because this Fisker Ocean is currently for sale and it's being auctioned live on cars and bids. It is a Fisker Ocean 1, but it is not one of the 5,000. And as far as his review, he does a good job applying his video format to the Fisker Ocean. He missed the passenger taco tray. The passenger has the ability to have that tray also. You can see in front of the center console. There's nothing in this slot, but that's where it would go. So maybe you can buy an... No. There is no adaptive cruise, even though he said this. I did get it to adaptive cruise control before, and it seemed like it was doing fine, but I'm not sure if that system is on or not. No. He doesn't identify that the screen only rotates when it's in park. You can decide whether you want the screen vertically oriented or horizontally oriented. The information is the same, but obviously displayed differently, and you can choose based on your own preference. And he pretty much misses all the features in the cargo area. The AC port, the bag hooks, the second storage compartment, just completely missed all those. And judging by all of these, intending to rival Tesla, a bit of an advantage over Tesla where everything is in the center screen. Tesla does it too, but Fisker doesn't have dealerships like Tesla. They're doing a direct to consumer sales model and the interior is also nice. It's a lot nicer than Tesla. This is a quick vehicle. It's not Tesla plaid quick, but it is like even something newer than Tesla. And it definitely checks a different box than, than Tesla in kind of a fun and cool and quirky way with some very neat, you could call them gimmicks, but I think nice features that, that attract a lot of attention and will surely attract a lot of interest. I think it's safe to assume that Doug DeMiro agrees. If you want the things that the Tesla Model Y is good at without having a Tesla Model Y, the Fisker Ocean is the one to get. People are quick to defend the Fisker Ocean 1 from all the negative posts. Admins ban people with negative questions or comments. I appreciate all of you who are in Fisker forums and appreciate you sharing the information from them very much. Like the first crashed ocean. However, because I try to report an unbiased, objective look at this car, it's hard for me to trust the information that comes from the forums, whether it be positive or negative. Thanks for your feedback. During the test drive, I noted that the steering wheel shape wasn't my favorite. I love fat steering wheels, especially for my large hands. You seem to be complaining about the steering wheel, but I'm sure it's something you get used to. I totally disagree about the steering wheel. I thought it looked strange, but it's actually the coolest shape I've ever used. Very utilitarian and unique. Maybe the problem is that I have small hands. Thanks for your feedback. Like you, I felt the big triangle shaped steering wheel was very odd. I can live with the sharp steering wheel, knowing the majority of interior fabrics and textures are from recycled sources, whereas Tesla and Volkswagen interiors look and feel similar and are mostly plastic. Not being able to turn off lane departure is a big minus for me. I definitely appreciate the use of recycled materials and lane departure warnings are tough to tolerate in a lot of situations. Thanks for your comment. 
As a reservation holder, can I opt to wait until Q3 or Q4 2024 to purchase an Ocean Ultra, hoping for a better product? I think with any line that you stand in, if you choose to stand in the back, it may affect when your delivery actually can or will take place. I would definitely contact Fisker for more information on that. Why did I opt for the Sport over the Ultra? The Sport is more affordable, and I'm not going to lie, that was my biggest consideration. But I don't need all-wheel drive, and the lithium iron phosphate batteries are a big plus in my book. For more on the batteries, make sure you check out my video. I did a whole breakdown. We are all witnessing a product in its infancy. Progression takes time, and I'm in the wait and see group. My reservation is still in since it does not hurt to keep it in place. If I'm asked to make a deposit, it will be a tough decision. Thanks for your feedback. Coming from a software background, it's just a matter of time before these concerns are addressed. First major software update rolls out in October. Phone with key seems to have been updated. That's great news. No heat pump, no adaptive cruise, no one pedal driving in the sport model. I'll probably opt for a Kia Niro or Hyundai Kona 2024. Software and interior quality are troublesome. Worried about spending that much for style without quality. Extreme reservation here. Am I getting an experiment like the Fisker Ocean 1? The only difference between the Extreme and the 1 are the digital enumeration, a badge on the back, and an earlier release date. The later your delivery, the better the software has potential to be. Otherwise, it's a solid car. Thanks for your comment. I live in a sales ban state. To be clear, you do expect the cars shipping now to improve over time. And have you heard about a roof rack? A direct sales ban of any kind doesn't sound very free market to me. I do expect the vehicles to improve. I think what I was driving and using was not a full production model software. And even if it was, it was an initial version. And what's on the roads right now is already better than that. The interior materials are going to be a personal preference. Some people are going to be okay with them. Some people are going to have other opinions. If you want that roof rack, I think right now it's going to have to be aftermarket or that Force E upgrade. Hope this helps. And with some Ocean 1 models currently already on the road, some owners stopped by to chime in. Now that I have been a Fisker Ocean 1 owner for two weeks, I must agree with you on absolutely every sentence in this video. It is an unfinished product with a material quality below expectations. Error messages, useless warnings, collision avoidance system that automatically disables itself, navigation is behind the times, and no car play. This car is a disappointment. I'm sorry about your experience. I hope the software improves and Fisker can deliver better in the future. Thanks for sharing your experience. I also want to address this. This isn't a real review. Absolutely not. It is not a review. It is a test drive. Got mine a few weeks ago. I couldn't agree more with everything you said. I don't regret it, but I'm not super excited. It should come with a box of Tylenol. As an Ocean One owner of 10 days, I'm enthusiastic about the positive points. But the critical ones should have been eliminated prior to launch. Steering wheel is vague. Noise level is too high. Suspension can be rough on poor surfaces. Do you notice a smell from the Alcantara? I did not spend enough time in it to notice any smells, and I really appreciate your feedback regarding the interior, steering, cabin, and tire noise. I took delivery three days ago in Oslo, Norway. I sold my Model Y long range, and I'm very pleased with the change to the Ocean 1. Ride quality is wonderful, build quality is good, and interior is okay. In my view, better than that of the Model Y. I agree that several functionalities should be in place by now. However, the basics are in place, except for lack of a creep or hold function longer than two seconds. Thank you so much for this review. I really appreciate it. Other commenters were unsatisfied with my analysis. Software should never be criticized this early. This is an easy fix over a short time. Criticism outside of that is understandable. Seems like a ton of people have canceled their reservations. I wonder how much money this video cost Fisker. I wanted to do an objective analysis. I will still take delivery. I encouraged others to do the same. There are almost the same number of positives as negatives in this video. Thanks for your comment. You don't understand Fisker's interior design philosophy. Old t-shirts are used in cockpit decor. Rubber waste from tire production used in tailgate protection. Recycled plastic bottles and fishing nets are turned into floor mats and carpets. I read the LCA and I understand the goal. What I'm trying to communicate is the quality of the material, regardless of where it came Came from. The new Apple Watch Series 9 is 100% recycled, and they've offset the entire life of the watch. However, there's absolutely no way to recognize that it is 100% recycled. Thanks for your feedback.
The accountant that was in charge is actually a team of interior designers. The senior one is named Amy Dixon, who has previously worked with Rolls-Royce, and Marlene Roger, who is a young talent and previously an intern at Renault. I think the design of the interior is great. I think the materials are going to disappoint some. The sport version will have a smaller battery pack, less weight, a little more sharp handling, or better balanced in turns. With regard to the sport model and its battery, I have a whole video on that. Make sure you check it out in the description. As far as the design team for the interior, I appreciate all of their efforts and I wasn't intending on putting anyone specific down. I don't think the design team had a choice of which materials to use. Great job getting your views, man. There is no way in hell I'm going to take advice from a guy that test drove a car for 10 minutes. Just ask someone, and I mean anyone, before you yap away false information. This is too easy, Tesla fanboy. A lot of focus on possible missing things. Very little enthusiasm on the great stuff. You are not objective, better work on that. If I was to focus more on the great stuff and less on the possible missing things, how would that be objective? Your opinion is welcome. Thanks for sharing. This is a Franken review. It's awful. Should I buy it? Yes. I appreciate your feedback, but this commenter kind of sums it up. This is an honest review to give honest feedback on things that can be improved. It's a first-gen vehicle. To me, this only shows a genuinely good intention providing honest feedback with the hope Fisker will listen and improve. I couldn't have said that one better myself. Thanks for commenting. So what do I recommend? If you're in line for the ocean, stay in line. The updates are coming. Here's a list of some of the things that are coming in future updates. And if you got in line for an ocean, it's likely the reason is you wanted an electric vehicle that does it all and does not have Tesla on the front or the back. The Fisker Ocean will deliver. And just like Subaru engine head gaskets like to blow, Toyota doesn't like to loan money to poor people, GM gets more praise for EVs than maybe they should. You did, Mary. You electrified the entire automobile industry. I'm serious. And Jim Farley likes to bash Tesla and Elon Musk. Fisker will have its negative nuances as well. But if you're done keeping up with the Joneses and would like the Joneses to think twice about keeping up with you, this does that right now. The Ocean has more range than an EV6 and an Ionic 5, but you can buy an EV6 or Ionic 5 right off the lot right now and they charge faster. The Ultra has more power and passenger room than a Mach-E, but the Mach-E has plug-in charge. It's way better looking than the Model Y, even though the Model Y has mature software, sentry modes, service centers, and a charging network that blows everyone else away. And the Fisker Ocean has more range and is more sustainable than the Q4 e-tron, Polestar 2, and C40. Check out my ranking video if you want a sarcastic look at all the options, or my Model Y versus Ocean comparison for a deep dive into individual feature breakdowns. And those are your comments. I've got a great comprehensive comparison of the Nissan Aria versus the Fisker Ocean coming up soon. It'll be here when it's done. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. See you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.